Film Guy recaps here, don't forget to like and subscribe. The film begins like a video game because a man named Roy is locked in a loop and his life looks like a video game. The first assassin sent to assault him is likewise chosen in a game-like fashion. Mr. Good Morning is the assassin's name. He enters Roy's house with a hatchet, and Roy awakens when he hears the girl lying next to him scream. Because this is his 139th try, he effortlessly dodges every single attack, and he already knows what Mr. Good Morning will do, therefore he easily beats him. Mr. Good Morning assaults Roy again as he walks quietly to the kitchen to have some coffee, and Roy splashes boiling coffee in his face. While doing so, he explains that he was first taken aback when this happened to him, but that it became tiresome after 140 times. He simply wants it to stop now. A chopper arrives and begins shooting at his flat. As his entire flat is demolished, he hides behind a pillar. Then he pulls out a knife and tosses it at the gunman, killing him and causing the chopper to crash. As the helicopter continues to shoot, he moves over to the couch and sits down. As everything around him is destroyed, he glances at a picture of his wife. He doesn't mind dying because he knows he's in a loop. The helicopter then smashes into his house, but he remains calm as if nothing has happened since he knows exactly when and how to avoid the chopper's wing. Then he claims that everything is about to blow up and that he needs to leap. He jumps into a vehicle and claims that it took him precisely 22 attempts to land correctly on the truck. He moves nonchalantly across moving automobiles, ensuring that none of them touch him, and proceeds to remove a man out of his orange car. He claims he always steals this automobile from the same man while screaming. He then admits that the individuals following him are two ladies. He gives them names and claims that he has no idea whether they are their true names because he never pauses to greet them. Roy refers to one of them as Pam. Their automobiles are parallel as Pam attempts to shoot him, but Roy reverses direction and drives away. Pam continues to pursue and shoot at him, but he soon loses them. When he realizes he hasn't passed the bus yet, he starts talking about it. He is then struck by a bus. As people gasp, he is hurled into the bus, and Roy dies smiling. He now begins to reflect on his prior encounters with the assassins. He recalls attempting number 79, in which he quickly got rid of Mr. Good Morning, but he banged his toes into the bed and shouted. He claims that there are usually tiny differences in the loop, but the one constant is that he always dies when the helicopter shoots him. While discussing attempt number 37, he says that he had no idea why he was being pursued by the assassins until Pam arrived and shot him in the head. Pam, he claims, has done this 14 times previously. Roy is aware that there are many assassins in the world. On his 69th try, he was walking down an escalator when an assassin named Guan Yin crept up behind him and hacked off his head with a katana. He knows her name because she usually says it after ending his life. On try 88, we observe a little figure connecting a bomb to Roy and blowing him up. Roy refers to him as Kaboom. We now hear about Roy number 2, an assassin who resembles Roy. In a flashback sequence, we see Roy entering into a room and colliding with Roy number 2, who both start shooting at each other. On attempt 104, he came upon the German twins and shot both of them. Roy now admits that he occasionally manages to kill them when Guan Yin slices off his head again. Roy has no idea why any of this is happening to him since he never has the time to figure it out. Roy attempted to call his estranged wife Gemma on attempt 48, but her phone was answered by her boss, Colonel Clive Venter, the head of defense contractor at Dino Labs. Venter informed Roy that Gemma had perished the night before in a lab accident. While everything was going on, the German twins arrived, each brandishing a bazooka and blowing Roy apart. Roy claims he never lives long enough to find it out. The flashback concludes, and we are now back in the present, on attempt 139, where Roy was hit by a bus. Attempt 140 is now underway. Roy tries to flee Pam, who is pursuing him once more. He avoids being hit by the bus, but Pam continues to pursue him. Pam continues to shoot at Roy until she takes out a grenade launcher, which stuns him. Pam blasts up a car behind him and continues to shoot at him until they reach an abandoned warehouse. When Pam's automobile approaches, Roy strikes it with his, causing the grenade launcher to fall into his car. He promptly comes to a halt, grabs the grenade launcher, and blasts up her entire car. Roy then travels to the cafe, where he encounters Chef Jake. Jake inquires about his health, to which he responds that he is perfectly fine. He also meets Dave, 
who is startled by how much Roy drinks after ordering two bottles. Dave was a very obnoxious individual who spoke far too much. Roy tells that Dave is constantly surprised by how much he drinks and then begins to chat incessantly. Roy knows precisely what Dave is going to say because of the loop. Roy recounts how a legendary sword warrior named Dai Fong usually appears after Dave has left. This time, Roy stops Dave and explains that he has never made it beyond 12.47 p.m. because all the assassins assemble and assassinate him at 12.47 p.m. every time, and no matter what he tries, he cannot make it past 12.47 p.m. All of the assassins storm the pub and shoot him while he holds a photograph of his loving wife. He claims that he must devise a strategy to get through this. He begins to recall yesterday, before Roy became trapped in a loop. Roy sees Gemma at Dino Labs in the unlooked timeline, commonly known as the day before, because she believes she has landed him a job interview. Gemma and Roy clash over their son Joe, who has yet to learn that Roy is his father. Dino's security chief summons Gemma to talk with Venter. Gemma explains that she requires Roy's services rather than his companionship. Roy is then seen seated at a pub as a lady wraps herself about him and giggles. The barman, another lovely lady, glances at them and grins. She asks how long they've known one other, and the lady responds that she only met Roy today. When the gorgeous barmaid delivers Roy a phone and says there is a phone call for him, the woman leaves herself to visit the loo. Gemma is on the phone, and she tells Roy about what she is about to do, but she is vague and doesn't explain how it would affect Roy. The lady returns from the toilet, and Roy takes her home, they sleep together, and this is the woman who screams and runs at the beginning of the film. On attempt 141, he recalls receiving a parcel containing a book. He recalls Gemma telling him about the Osiris, and that the book was about Osiris. When the chopper shoots him, he is looking at a book. On try 142, he is pursued by Pam, he reads while driving and loses sight of the bus. He is killed when the bus hits him. On try 143, he chooses not to read while driving in order to prevent being hit by a bus. He succeeds, but notices that he has missed the cafe where he is sitting. He claims that if he is not in the cafe, he is always killed. He recalls a day when he was happily eating a sandwich when Smiley appeared and struck him with an arrow connected to a rope. Smiley then attached the rope to his car and hauled Roy behind the wheel. Because of his awful smile, Roy began referring to this assassin as Smiley. On 144, Roy comes in underground Atlanta, believing that he would have some alone time without anyone attempting to murder him. He finally has time to read the book and figure out what is going on with him. He notices Joe and follows him into the main arcade area, where Joe admits he skipped school to compete in a video game contest. Roy informs Joe that he will not tell his mother and will remain out of trouble, but that he must attend school tomorrow. Roy leads him outside and begins talking to him. When they return, Roy notices the time and realizes that this is the longest he has ever lived. He realizes they are following him since they couldn't tell where he was when he went underground. The assassins are now appearing one by one. Roy holds Joe and shields him from the gunshots as they begin to fire. Roy is now revealed to be Joe's father. Roy has died yet again. When he realizes he is being followed, he wakes up and kills every assassin who was following him. He walks into the cafe and runs into Dave. He locates a tracker in his tooth with the assistance of Dave. As soon as he realizes there is a tracker in there, he grabs a pair of strong pliers and pulls his teeth out. He also discovers that this was the work of his dentist. While Dave cries, he pulls his teeth out. Roy number two, his duplicate, then arrives and shoots him. He wakes up the next day and swiftly removes the transmitter from his teeth. Roy deceived the assassins and finally murdered them like they used to kill him now that they couldn't follow him down. He captures and murders Pam. He executes the assassin Smiley in the same manner that he executed Roy, by hanging him behind a car and dragging the corpse. He goes to the lab after murdering the assassins. He crashes his automobile into the wall, believing he is inside, but the car is utterly ruined. He tries to climb over the barriers, but it too fails. The facility was well fortified, and he had difficulty breaking in since Brett killed him every time. Roy repeatedly attempts to penetrate Dino's defenses but fails. Then he finds his way inside the institution, but he is slain in the lift by a swarm of guards. He ultimately figures it out and gets past the guards, but he runs across Guan Yin again, who takes his life. 
Roy tries again and again, but he can never get past Guan Yin. Guan Yin badly injures Roy again on try 156. Venter eventually tells the truth about the lab machine and his purpose. The Osiris Spindle is a quantum device capable of changing history. Venter intends to utilize it to establish himself as the world's ruler. Venter also admits to being responsible for Gemma's death. Roy realizes Gemma used the Osiris Spindle to trap him in time. Venter was unsure whether his gadget even worked. He takes Guan Yin's sword and slices off Roy's head. On his second effort, he realizes the significance of Gemma's book. To halt Venter, she entangled him in a temporal loop. To stop Venter, he needed to defeat Guan Yin. He awakens and removes the transmitter from his teeth. He visits the cafe and meets the well-known sword master Dai Feng. She offers to train Roy in order for him to go and kill Guan Yin. Roy employs some of his previous attempts and trains with Dai Feng. He returns to Guan Yin after the training, and this time he kills her. He even murders Brett and nearly murders Venter. He tells Venter everything, including the fact that his contraption works and that he has been trapped in an infinite time loop. Venter discloses that the Osiris spindle has been running for a long time and cannot be turned off. And that if it continues to operate for too long, it will kill the Earth. Roy learns that Joe is being hunted by the other assassins when he is at Dino. When Roy arrives to the arcade, cops are taking Joe's body from the scene. As Roy tries to elude the cops, the Osiris spindle bursts, bringing an end to everything. It utterly destroys everything. Roy awakens with a heavy heart. He believes that rising up and fighting is pointless since everything would be destroyed in the end. Mr. Good Morning kills him multiple times before he can even stand up. Finally, a ray of hope arises as he considers spending time with his kid rather than dealing with the assassins. Roy begins to spend his days connecting with Joe through a variety of activities. Roy and Joe have a longer talk on attempt 249, and Joe admits that he received a message from his mother that morning. When Roy wakes up each morning, he notices the timestamp on the note and realizes that Gemma is still alive. Roy hops on board the helicopter on the second try and instructs the pilot to fly them to Dino. He knocks out the pilot, uses the tiny pistol to kill all the assassins who traced him to the facility, saves Joe, and fights his way downstairs in time to kill Brett and Venter while also saving Gemma. Roy admits that he has been attempting to be a father to Joe and that he witnessed the end of the world. Gemma says that if Roy enters the Osiris Spindle, which would transport him back to the beginning of the day one final time, they may be able to stop the chain reaction. Roy awakens in his bed after entering the Osiris Spindle. Here the movie ends. To watch more awesome and thought-provoking movie recaps, please subscribe to Film Guy Recaps. Don't forget to like this video and tell us in the comments which movie you want to see next. Goodbye for now.